Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And this is just not any other episode of the show. This is episode 200. And for 200, I decided I wanted to make it a little more special. So I've got Ceci Bretto and Melissa Unsell from Vinicius Speaking uh, blog. And we're also at their wine shop called Wine A Fine Wine Shop here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, those of you on Ustream, hopefully it's still working. I think it is. I don't know. Yeah, I see movement. All right. Um, if you're in San Antonio, hey, you got to come over here, okay? you got to come over here. Um, so we are here to not just celebrate my 200th episode, but it's going to be their 200th blog post. Uh, so we're going to have a combined little thing going on. We're the only two wine bloggers in San Antonio that we know of. If you are a wine blogger in San Antonio, please let us know because we'd like to hook up with you and, <laughs> and try to do some collaboration and at least know there's other people out there blogging about wine. I mean, we've got a lot of foodies here, but we don't have a lot of wine bloggers. Um, so you've got that. Uh, I'll have links below uh, for uh, the wine shop and for uh, the, for um, their blog, so you can check it all out. You have to, you have to go to the website to get click links. Anyway, um, trying to get trying to get web traffic. <laughs> so um, anyway, so we are going to be tasting a bunch of wine here. We're actually going to have a couple episodes here, but we're going to do the first one here. Um, and uh, sexy has got us some cool wine. I'm going to hand it over to you. Hey. Again, I'm Ceci Boyle, and I'm with Uncle from Venus' Speaking Wine Blog, and we just recently um, purchased a shop called Wine, a fine wine shop. She didn't even know if you were speaking a fine wine shop. Um, it's at 7271-117. Now we can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Ceci, you were on the wrong channel. Let's redo this. <laughs> Take two. Uh, take two. So I, unfortunately, if, if uh, we don't have we don't have take twos, we just keep going. So, oh. so okay. unfortunately, you might hear a lot of interference because both of our microphones are on the same channel. So okay. um, anyway, go ahead and just restart what you were saying. Okay. I well, think I'm you've forgotten what I said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Ceci Barreto, and this is Melissa Unsel, and we are just really honored to have Leet Wine uh, doing the video with us and joining for the 200th episode. So we are here. Uh, representing Venusly Speaking Wine Blog and Wine, a fine wine shop, which is a wine shop that we recently purchased. It is soon to be renamed Venusly Speaking Wine Shop. We are located at 7271 Wurzbach, Suite 117, zip code 78240. Come check us out. Um, the first episode that we're doing, as Mark said, is a tasting of wines. There's three wines that we're tasting, and they are from the Biltmore Estates. So we would like to thank the Biltmore Estates for sending us these wines. Again, they were gratuitous. They were sent to us as samples. So on we go. On we go, yes. <laughs> so for those of you that are not familiar with Biltmore Estate wines, I'm not going to keep looking at the camera because there actually are people here. Oh, yeah. Um, Biltmore. Real people. <laughs> <laughs> people. Biltmore Estates was, or is, um, an estate that was built by George Vanderbilt. Um, he is the son of the Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt, who built the Vanderbilt name with the fortunes coming from shipping railroads. Um, his son, George, however, really favored art over the industry work that his father did. So he decided that a chateau was called for in North Carolina, and he decided to bring in European architects and designers to build a chateau. Um, I don't think you can see it in here. Anyways, it does look like a chateau, and it's in North Carolina. So if you're ever in need for a European vacation but can't make it out to Europe, go to North Carolina. Um, the doors open for the estate in Christmas of 1895, I do believe, and so they invited family and friends to come see this enormous state, 250 rooms, 23,000 books, an intense library, and 8,000 acres of gardens, beautiful estate. Um, after several years, though, they did realize that they weren't making money and they were actually losing millions of dollars. So the grandson 
of George Vanderbilt, his name is William Cecil, decided that, well, if I have a French chateau, I should have vineyards. So he decided to make wines. And so now we're going to taste a few of their wines. They do produce an enormous amount of wine. Let me see the numbers. One second. I think it was over two million. It's amazing. It is. Well, they have one million guests every year to the Biltmore Estate. It is uh, America's most visited winery, which I'm sure several people in Napa might uh, feel a little bit awkward about that, but apparently that's what it says. <laughs> they produce two million bottles annually. Um, I personally have not seen them before. I don't know if you guys have seen them or tasted them. I saw, I, I tasted some Biltmore. Yeah, I tasted some Biltmore at the, um, uh, whichever the, the wine tasting that's on the Riverwalk that it's impossible to taste wine because you got a billion people there trying to trying to okay. eat food, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, the culinaria, that's it. Not the uh, not okay. the bad mouth culinaria. I think no, they do a great a job. It's just there. just <laughs> too many people okay. trying to get to the wine. But yes, they had they had they had a built more table, and I was I was very um very impressed with it actually. Okay, very good. I was good. surprised. Yeah. Put it that way. Well, I've never tasted them. Apparently, North Carolina um, has seen an increase in their wine production. They now have 50 wineries and more than 250 growers. So, obviously, a lot of people send their grapes juice to uh, wineries. And their winemakers are a Frenchman who apparently I followed him because he lived in Lyon and Dijon, which is where I lived when I studied in France. Mm -hmm. His name is Bernard de Lille, and also the winemaker Sharon Fenchak. I hope I pronounced your names right. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, some just to the information. I have a nice little packet they sent me. I would like to say bravo to the person that put together this press, press package. Right. It's quite nice. So Very you nice. all should look together on these. Lots more information. Let's get to the juicy part. No pun all right. intended. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So everybody has the bubbly. Uh, this is the Biltmore Estate Sparkling Collection. Uh, this is the Blanc de Blanc, the method champenoise, which means that it's made in the champagne style, meaning that it has undergone a second fermentation in the bottle. If any of you viewers out there don't understand that, let us know, because otherwise I'll keep talking for an hour. Right, yes. <laughs> in, other words, in other words, the CO2 wasn't injected in a big tank. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Happened in the bottle. Uh, basically, the top quality of champagne um, method uh, is used for the top quality sparkling wines. This one is 100% Chardonnay. Um, oftentimes, you can add Pinot Meunier, Pinot Noir, a couple mm -hmm. other sparkling varietals in any case. 100% Chardonnay. This comes from the Russian River Valley, so even though it is coming from North Carolina, the juice and grapes are coming from Russian River Valley. And it's aged 18 to 24 months before uh, disgorging. And let's taste. All right. Cheers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so Mark's going to let us know what we smell here. That's the plan, right? Mm. <laughs> it's a... Uh, I know. I, I feel it's like kind of apricotty, like, and a little bit of a little bit of bakery stuff. But typically, with a lot of sparkling wines, you'll get that bakery mm -hmm. um, bread type of stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it feels that there's a little bit there, but there's there's a little bit of fruit that I'm. I usually get just the overwhelming bakery stuff when I smell a champagne yeah. style wine, but I don't get that as much. But I get kind of the fruit, and that's kind of about it. There's not not a whole lot going on, at least on my nose. Now, I am sniffling. I've been sneezing a lot since I got here, so um, I don't know. What do, what does, so you get some green apple? Green apple. Okay. That kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think I can see that, too. So this is where, you know, um, this, by the way, this is actually the first live tasting I've done. I mean, I've had other people with me, and I've done Skype interviews, and you can play off upon it, but this is what I love about wine is that we all have different experiences. I keep talking about that. Now I've got it here right there live. You're going to yeah. hear this type of stuff. We all have different experiences. So some, somebody um, gets, more, gets green apple more than other people because that's something that they key in on rather than I key in on the bakery aspect. I mean, I, I worked... Um, back in back in my first sm summer of college, uh, when I came back here, I worked with T.J. Cinnamon. So there's probably something with the whole bakery aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, and where I do work now, we bake our own bread. 
I'm not there when we bake it, but <laughs> we do bake our own bread, so there could be a lot of that yeah. influence. And one of the interesting things that we do over at Venusly Speaking is we have our very own wine blogger that pairs fashion with wine. So let's see what fashion she has going for us today. <laughs> Absolutely. At Venusly Speaking, we are always very creative, and I love honing in on fashion perks that go along with aspects of wine. Bubbly, I think of pop. You got pop on your palate with the bubbles. You got the pop of the sound when you open the bottle. I automatically think of the in color for the season. Bordeaux. No, we're not drinking it. <laughs> the in color is Bordeaux. Have a little scarf, maybe some shades that are color of Bordeaux. Put those on. That'll be perfect with this wine. Now, I have to ask you guys in the audience, would you purchase this wine? Is it good? Is it great for your palate? And I actually, I need to taste it. Mm -hmm. Don't feel ashamed. Would you, is this a, if, if somebody gave you this wine and you're saying, hey, I like it, you go out and buy it again? Maybe? No? Raise of hands if you'd buy it. All right. We Unanimous. have majority here. Majority vote. So great. Biltmore Estates, people will buy your wine. We haven't said the, re the retail price yet, <laughs> so that's another, another question yet. But it's something that they would want to buy. Is there anything that you can think of you'd pair it with besides a great party? Oh man, champagne. I mean, you just everything. everything you know. Sushi. I mean, a life without champagne. Who? I can't remember the exact quote, but there was there was a a lady that talked about you know life without champagne was just no life at all type of thing. You know that that type of idea. Um, tasting, I get the green apples a whole yeah, lot in the green yes, apples tasting. Lots of green apples. It. Or wasn't so. it? Or was it Oscar Wilde that said he regretted not drinking en enough champagne in his right. lifetime? Right. Um, so this is what I do like to do this uh, when I go out. I, if it's champagne, it's champagne. But with sparkling wine, honestly, I have it as, as an aperitif. When I go out, I'll drink it with my salad. Um, if it's like a nice light salad with a, like a vinaigrette type of dressing, not like a ranch or blue cheese dressing, though blue cheese might work. Um, I just that's my preference for dressings. But um, this is a great way to start off a meal. A sparkling wine uh, is, is just another way of doing it. And we all tend to drink sparkling wines for celebrations, but you can drink this any time you want. I mean, it's just that we just as a society, I think, feel that sparkling wine is something special and it, and, and it can only be drank mm -hmm. on special occasions. You know, and that's, that's a very good point, Mark, because it can be consumed every day. And I'll have to say, I'm very proud of my sister who's in the audience. My sister and I always... Always start off a meal right. with a sparkling wine as an aperitif, like you should. It's a great way if, to do that. If so. I can do it, I will. You know, and yeah. um, and then this wine has also got great acid. Um, it's not focused, but it's great acid. You know why? Because my mouth is watering. It's not because I was talking mm -hmm. about food, yeah. <laughs> because it's just con I'm just salivating, and that's another indication of yeah. really good acid on your wine. Is that um, it's it, it, and as an aperitif, it's like you want to put food with this wine. Mm -hmm you need food with this wine. So, I mean, it's, um, I think it's really good. I think it's, uh, mm. it's got some nice, like I said, the green, I get the green apple on the palate more than, than the nose, yeah. but uh, you get that, that apple-y type of stuff. Um, it's not hugely acidic, but there's enough acid there that you, you've got the, um, mm. you've got the mouth-watering aspect. It's very good. I like it a lot. Okay. Absolutely. Just to let you know that the Biltmore Estate did suggest a few pairings, so um, it'd be great with slightly spicy dishes, uh, like crawfish etouffee. Uh, fresh seafood like halibut and oysters on the half shell, or soft savory cheeses such as brie with a little bit of green apple. There you go. Exactly. Yeah, you put that that, mm. that combination would be awesome. Yeah. And in champagnes or sparkling wines in general, you know, in oysters is is a classic combination. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like seafood, but I understand the I understand the, the I know. Sorry. I'm just, <laughs> I try to, hey, there's, there's me on camera. Um, and this, caviar too. I've tried a lot, and, and there's, there's, there's video of me with uh, Anthony Pedrotti, um, and he had like a, some type of uh, crab dip, and he told me ahead of time what it was, so before it was on camera, I told him, said, don't be offended if I don't like this, I'm just telling you straight up. And, and they had like the Sauvignon Blanc with it, and this is back with the Sales by Five was doing their pity parties and all that. And um, I'm over there, and I'm, I'm eating it, and I literally am like going, ooh, and I swallow it, and I pair it with one, and I go, see, I told you I don't like it, but I understand the pairing better, you know. Yeah. So to finish off the sparkling uh, Biltmore Estates, it has a suggested retail of 
So everybody that raised their hand, would you still buy this wine for that price? At that price point. And this is actually like, please let us know so that we can give feedback. So raise your hand, raise your loud hand. and proud, if you pay twenty four ninety nine. And it's something where you know, if you think about it, okay, so you you sit there and you go, okay, you like it, and we know it's an American sparkling wine, and so we know it's not true champagne. Yeah. But if it was if this was from France, would that make a difference? It shouldn't. No. But a lot of people are going to say, oh well, yeah. if it's not French champagne, then I'm not going to spend twenty four dollars for a bottle. I want to spend ten dollars for that bottle yeah. of whatever plunk from California. Well, I think you know? that they do have a good market with the price, judging by the hands that were raised. Maybe if it were more twenty. It might see a few more hands, but obviously we're just a, a small crowd here, so they would buy it. Nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine. That's the price. Yeah. Right. This, this is suggested retail. If you were to come into the wine shop, maybe we can chat about a price. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Um, in any case, so great wine. Um, I think overall people were pleased with the price range and the style. So now we'll be moving on to the two still white wines. Um, we covered them up because I found, no, I found, I think that I would like to not know which one is North Carolina yeah. and which one is from California. Right. So <laughs> we're going to pass these around while I talk about them. Um, one is from California. One is from North Carolina as far as the juice and grapes are concerned. I don't know what they are. I don't know. I don't know what they are. I was we'll standing right out. next Just to them and they bagged them up. And so <laughs> this is, yeah, my so first go. live Okay. Blind tasting. Blind tasting. Here yeah. we go. Everybody, get your glasses together. I'm passing around the number two. Number two. I'm putting the number two in my yellow marked glass to the line. Okay, number two. Would you like the number two? Yes, please. Number two. Mark, I'm going to let you pour you. number two while I pour Absolutely. this. Number four, going in the red one. If y'all would like to do the same, that way we're all in the same. All right, pass this around, yes. 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 Here we pass go. Around. All right. There we go. Pass you that. And no peeking. No, no peeking. Warning. I'm going to write this down because I might forget. Two. That's a good yellow, idea. Two yellow. Four. four all right. Red. red. Okay. So. Um. Everyone so, has two glasses. Yes. Or. Yes. Okay. Good. If you don't have two glasses, then. I've too got bad. a couple over here. <laughs> okay. All so right. I will talk about. Yeah, we're still live. I see movement over there. So that's good. Okay, so we have both wines are going to be the grape Chardonnay. Okay. Um, one is specifically unoaked. I don't know which one it is, but I will talk about it. The unoaked one is from Sonoma County, a 2010 vintage. Um, there are only 800 cases produced, so very small production. Um, it is in stainless steel tanks, and one third of it has gone through malolactic fermentation. So for you wine geeks out there that know that, Yay, if you don't know what malolactic is, talk to me later. Um, we'll worry about the notes later. Okay, the next one is coming from North Carolina. It's 2009, so a year older. Again, Chardonnay with 3% Viognier. Um, Viognier is an aromatic grape, so maybe there's one that's a little more aromatic. That might give you a hint. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, it's is aged in French and American barrels for six to eight months, blended then bottled. So yes. Yeah. So let's see what we think. All right. Panel. All right. So one is. Yellow is two. One has red a little bit four. of Viognier. Okay. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got it. <laughs> got it. <laughs> no. Mm. Hold on. Remember, one is unoaked, sure. which is the Sonoma, and one is oaked, which is North Carolina. Yeah. So if you smell anything oaky, oaky or vanilla or toasty, it's probably going to be the North Carolina one. Yep. Okay. You guys got it? Okay. You got it? You got okay. which one? You want to be on the edge of North Carolina? Carolina? I think I, I think that the red one is the, red the one. oaky one. I think it's North Carolina. Yeah, that was number four. Right. Number four. All right. Shall we do a little... Unveiling, her. unveiling. We almost have that one going around the room, and then oh. we can. Okay. Let's unveil number four. I think I, I do smell more oaky flavors on the one I poured in the red one, which is number four. I agree. By far. Mm -hmm. It's like a fire. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
with Alfredo what sauce. Cheese? Yoda. Y Yoda. Gouda. Oh, Gouda. I'm thinking I was Star like... Wars. Star Wars already. Yoda? What? <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> I just thought I'd put a little. Cheese you speak of? What? Cheese? <laughs> 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 yes. And the unoaked. Um... I found my lightsaber in the drawer trying to find the airport earlier. <laughs> Not a. Never mind. <laughs> The unoaked says lobster a la creme, which naturally. Uh, oh, naturally. <laughs> and you know, with, with and the unoaked has a lot more acid to it, so yeah. yes, it will go through the, through through the, the cream, cream sauce. Yes. Mm -hmm. It says seafood lasagna, braised chicken gnocchi with brown butter and fontina cheese. Sounds fabulous, right? I'll have that. Hungry. Mm -hmm. I'll have that. <laughs> so um, I think that this wraps it up. Biltmore, thank you for sending the wines. Right. I think everyone was really pleased. I think your price points are great. Um, I mean, honestly, your retail price for sparkling is not bad. I think, you know, with a discount, maybe some retailers are going to give it all. It fits the right point. Thank you for sending them to us. Our crowd enjoyed them. And thank you for being a part of our 200th video episode. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, and just to wrap this up, uh, we'll, we'll record a few more, but I do want to thank everybody for, for coming yes, over here you. to the wine shop. Uh, I'd like to thank Ceci and Melissa for uh, inviting me to help them out or help me out or help, you know, collaboration here. Collaboration. Um, exactly. Um, make sure you stop by the website. I'll have links to everything here uh, with, with the wines and the wine shop and their blog. Um, and there's things, other things, you know, um, PayPal donations on this side. Anyway, um, <laughs> hey, you know, I don't make any. We were actually talking about about you know, like everyone thinks you make a lot of money, you know, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. You know, we're not making. I, I I have a day job, you know, and that's that's, that's how right. I make my money. But um, uh, so anyways, we got that and just information. Uh, sommelier school should be starting the third week of January, maybe, and we will be vid going through advanced studies now. This is not just the history and geography test. This is a little bit more advanced, and uh, we'll start with Bordeaux, and we'll do each region each week. This will probably take at least a month or so to do Bordeaux. So we won't try to finish all, everything inside of a year uh, in anticipation of me taking the certified test in August at the Texon conference, assuming they'll have the test then. Um, so we'll have that, and uh, that's going to do it. We've got another episode to do, uh, or a couple more, right? We've got a couple yeah. more? Yeah. yeah. We've got a couple more to do, and uh, we'll see where we begin next time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Thank you. All right. <laughs>